What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Third Person. My name is Chris. That's Mike. What's up? Guys, we're talking The Walking Dead. This is episode four of season nine. It's called The Oblige. Mike, let's just do it. <laughs> let's just jump right into it, man. Let's let's talk about Rick being impaled. What do you, man? I you wrote, uh, I wrote this episode made me sick. I want to puke. I'm very upset because the realization has come true. Yeah. You know, it's it's crazy because we've been we've known this has been coming. And it just it just clicked for me, right? And I'm like, shit, you know, it sucks. It sucks. I mean, what what, what are you what are you feeling about this whole I, impaled yeah, I, I agree. on a rock? I rebound? think I I'm not a fan of how it went down. I feel like it, you know, they they could have at least you know led up led up to it and maybe surprised us instead of letting us know months ahead and then and then all of a sudden two episodes left and we're like that was the biggest shock about the whole thing. Yeah. Really? Yeah, no, I mean, I agree. You know, we, we talk about this a lot. This is the fact that now we knew Andrew Lincoln was was leaving for right. how, however that came out. It's so many loose lips. It's it's out of control. So I wonder if um, – however, I wonder if, if Andrew himself put that out there and it got leaked and he didn't mean for that to happen and someone else just put out. So they said, screw it. We have to, well, we have then, to release this information. But, but then he said it at a comic con, you know, like then he, then, yeah. Then well, he just, eventually I guess, cause it, it picked up some steam, yeah, but that's, right. but that's, that's besides the point. The main point is, is that after episode two, I believe it was, is then they tell us exactly when it, when it will be. And I think that's what took the shock value out of it. Now, even though we knew he was leaving, we, it could have been episode eight. It could have been episode nine. It could have been episode three. So that would have given more um, for the viewer mm -hmm. to anticipate or not anticipate because this is just a horrible thing. Yeah. So, see, you know, the only thing moving forward is what is this show going to be like? You know, what it, it uh, you know, not to say that there aren't, that there aren't strong enough characters because these characters are strong and they, and they are, but, you know, at, with Rick as a linchpin, you know, can we move forward with Maggie doing whatever Maggie wants? And because without Rick, the motivations like he, they they made it too much that Rick was was that, like I said, the linchpin like this all rests on Rick. So in my mind, once Rick is gone, it's going to be pandemonium because you're going to have everybody yeah. doing whatever they want again. But yeah. I mean, so they're having Michonne, and you know, and we'll talk about Michonne's back and forth. You know, the re, you know, she's she she wakes up, and you know, she's you know, she has a conversation with Negan, and and Negan says we're alike, and she realizes that oh, wait, maybe we are a little bit alike. At first, she says no, right? But she's getting up, and she's 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 a fighter, she's a warrior, she can't stay down. She's got to pick up that sword, and she's got to go out there, and she's got to do that. You know what I mean? Yeah, maybe she feels like she'll be she'll get soft or something if she's not using her ability. And everybody's sitting in, in a confined space with protection and walls and right. you know all this kind of stuff. Uh, she she's not that kind of person. I think she still wants to continue her craft. And yeah, I don't necessarily think that katana should be sitting up on any wall or over a mantle or anything for for much too long. But that was cool the way they shot everything. Oh, they showed, the music worked out. Oh yeah, yeah the was, music was, was cool. It was like a two sided thing. It was like a Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde kind of a a feel because we got number one it was cool for the fact that we see what she's doing with judith we see how how the motherly um uh how much of a mother she feels to this child and reading her books and they're playing and this and that but besides that is we're seeing how much involved she is in in alexandria that, and, and that's the taking point. notes and she's studying whatever she's well she's building know, the laws yeah. she's studying up on laws and townships and, and, and she has the plans for the church and there's just a lot more they gave us a lot um so that's why it, with rick's departure i can see michonne being that one in alexandria right but just that, because but, of what they gave us in that montage but now but is but is is that have they laid enough foundation for it to shift to her now and being like, well, now we're going to follow Michonne because Michonne's creating these laws and Michonne is going to be the leader of these things. You know what I'm saying? It's mm. taking a character that that wasn't necessarily that, but making making her that. And that's fine. Maggie is still Maggie. And, and you know, and, you know, she's heading over. She wants to go take care of Negan. And, and, and you know, we could talk about where Negan's bat is in a second because you have some theories about that with, with yeah. um, Michonne, um, Maggie. But let's just stay on shown for a second he she talks to negan and, and you know when we see negan, which, which was great it was good <laughs> but you know i we we initially we very you know we get negan 
You know, oh, okay, mm-hmm. this is they 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 reintroduced Negan because we hadn't seen him yet, and oh, he's still Negan. He's still a dick. He's still manipulative. He's still trying to get out. You know, and 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 everything. And but yeah. I guess people, I guess you got to do that. And you know, she has this comment. You know, like I said earlier, he's you know we're the same. We're the same. You know, and and we have these loved ones, but these loved ones make us weak, right? Yeah, well, that's what, and and Michonne deliberately said these are like my children. Carl was my son. Right, yeah. Judith is is my daughter. So let's see what you know. What what kind of person would Michonne turn into if God forbid Judith is gone? And, and what what is what is the rest of the cast gonna feel like as soon as they find out what what happens with Rick? Right. And and Rick passing, however he does, if they even leave us with a cliffhanger or not. You know, which I hope they don't. I'd rather it be conclusive. Right. So let's just see what these characters. I'm gonna love to to see how Michonne deals with it, how um, Daryl deals with it, Carol, all these characters that that have been with Rick since day one. And um, I think it's only gonna be short lived, though. We talked about that. That maybe that'll only last for episode five, episode six, like that, because you can't do that for the rest of the season. What are they gonna? That- yeah. A big sob story about Rick's death. So I think these next couple episodes will be um, sad, but really um, the dialogue and everything and the acting, I think, is going to be really spot on with Rick's death. Yeah. So, you know, talking about Daryl, let's go back to that pit. You know, it was yeah. they let's listen, they're brothers, you know, they're, they're the mm-hmm. type of brothers that mm-hmm. Merle and Daryl were not. Yeah. And, you know, Merle and Daryl did care for each other, but this is a different this is, you know, a more respect. This isn't a fear-based thing, and and you know they love each other to the point where they can fight, they can scuffle, and they can be like, "Well, I don't, I don't agree with you." Well, I don't agree with you, but they make it into that pit, and you know, and they have this conversation where Daryl's like, "Dude, I will die for you." He's like, "But you're wrong, and you're not. You have to, you have to let go. You're not opening your eyes. You have to let go." And he's and and Rick's just like tearing up, going, "Yeah, but Carl, but Carl." He's like, "But yeah. that 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 doesn't work, bro." He's like, "It does. It's not gonna happen that way." And, yeah. you know, and, and not for nothing, but, you know, Rick was like, you know, you start to think about it and stuff. And then all of a sudden they have the Walker attack, which, you know, um, you know, you know, one of your favorite things is when the earth <laughs> is conveniently, you know, just so, so sl- perfectly concaved and smooth. <sighs> You it's know, okay. It, so, so it there was, was like sliding slip walkers. And slides, Look, and it was, it was, it was a little comical to me. You know, yeah. Climbs if you want to be, if you want to be nitpicky about it, and yeah, the, it was. But you know, whatever, man. You know, you, you don't want to. Those, it, those, those ropes and uh, roots look very similar in in nature. Sometimes, I guess, but <laughs> it's a rope root. Uh, it's you know, listen. It, it, I can get past that because of what a great scene and and right. and yeah, great. Right, right, uh, right dialogue between and you know lines between rick and but, daryl you know that does that leads me to another point is that we have these people you have you know um you have people they they they, they know how to deal with the walkers they're yeah. they're they're heroes man they're there are heroes they they we don't worry about them getting hurt but this season when i and i think what a really what what's really been happening is a really cool thing that angela kang and all, and all the writers and everything what they're doing this season is making the walkers um, scary again, which is what they said they were going to do, and I think they're delivering. You have situ- you have these these hardened people. I mean, Maggie can take out ten walkers by herself, you know, like she did in that scene with with Sydney, um, Cindy, uh, at the shack. You know, she's like, I got him. You don't even see it; it's off screen, and she's taking care of a horde, like a, a small horde by herself. Yeah. You know, and then you have the thing that happened, like with Aaron when he lost his arm. Like they're showing us that yes, these people. Ha- don't necessarily fear them that much but they can very easily get overwhelmed they 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 are still a threat and this was no you know exception you know it's like a two favorite characters two main characters they're stuck in a place where these things are going to happen they're climbing up these things are reaching at them like it was like wow these this could be a thing i mean you know it wasn't going to happen but it could be you know like it was a situation where you know swinging an axe or a knife isn't going to get you very far you know no, I agree, and that's why I think that the horde is is what makes um, makes it a little bit scary. In the fact that we know that we know, just like you said, that they can handle and take care of their business. Um, we have these two huge hordes, and because of the gunfire, or whatever happened back yeah, at so, at the bridge. So that's a thing that happened. You know, it, it, you can be you can be whomever you can take out however many walkers you think, but when it comes to two huge clusters 
of walkers um, um, now turning and coming toward you. Yeah, well, and, it's going to take one man being gonna, impaled on rebar. I mean, yeah. what are you going to do? You know, yeah. um, that. So, Je, what's his name? Jeb. Jed. Jed. Jed yeah, comes Jed. back like an idiot with a bunch of stick wheeled and idiots, and it's like, why? That see, that just seemed like it was a di- divisive plot point where all of a sudden, oh, they came back. They're starting stuff. And mm-hmm. that's going to that's gonna be, that's the cause of Rick's downfall. So it's poetic in that he was doing his best to bring all these people together and these these freaking a- a-holes that, that, that left, left him high yeah. and dry after he tried helping them and stuff, you know, they come back and they're the ones that do them in. So it's like... It's tough too, in a way, because really... Look what happened when in in the last season when they tried to starve Negan out. It was because of Daryl and um, who was that Rosita or no was it Tara that they tried to they tried to to bypass Rick's plan and oh, that yeah. caused yeah, yeah. everybody Tara coming and Darryl, out. Yeah, um, and now in this oh no one, Rosita and Tara yeah right sorry yeah um, and then in this in this season it's really Oceanside which has every reason to go after. Um, the saviors, yeah. but it really was because of them that Jed came back in the first place. Is Oceanside's killing our people, yeah. kind of a thing. So that's the so whole in thing. a way, it's yeah. Rick can only do so much, and in the end, some of his people that are on his side let him down. They did. They did. You and, know what I and, mean? And I think, you know, I said <clears> this. I think in the previous episode here that, you know, what we what we are seeing is that everybody's we're seeing everybody's perspective on this. Yeah. And just because Rick thinks that it could happen, well, guess what? That's not the truth. You know, not that Rick's vision can't happen eventually, but he's trying to push it forward to a point where it's like, no, it's going to take a little longer than that. You know what I mean? Like, well, it, was, it seemed to have been working for a year and a half. No, no, no. This no, it was only it's only been three months since since it. No, since for the, the bri- for the bridge. But it's been a year and a half since Negan to the beginning of oh, oh, uh, season one. Yeah, uh, yeah. Episode one, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the saviors, they were helping with the saviors and, and getting the corn. All that stuff was happening before the bridge. Well, so during the three months, of, right. But but but, but yeah. again, it's, yeah, it, it, look, but it's it, it's still going to take a while, you know. And anyway, yeah. now yeah. to me, that's oh, all thrown yeah. out the damn window. Yeah, it is. Um, it let's is. just real quick talk about Jadis and Gabriel. I, I'm I'm kind of over it. I I enjoyed it when it was Anne and Gabriel. I don't know why I liked the little love story thing. It was kind of cool seeing those two characters both full of regret and remorse, and they're both a holes. You know what I mean? Yeah. And now she's back, and you know we had a whole thing last week with the A and the B, and you know I I was wrong. I I said I said the opposite thing, but she's she thought he was a B, but he's an A. But what does that mean? Still, that still is it alpha, mean? beta? Is it yeah. is it alive, bitten? Like, what does it mean? You know, she said, you know, he ends up talking her out of him getting bitten. But what the hell does that mean? He says, I'm not going to go with you. You know, but I don't know. I just I just figured we just pop that in there real quick. But I'm over that. I'm, I'm yeah. I'm kind of. I mean, it, there's so much back and forth with her, and so many so much flip flopping with her. And I thought we were kind of finished with yeah. that. Like you said, when when we got the Anne part, we found out she was a, a teacher at one point or something like that, and yeah. she's into the art kind of stuff. And it actually seemed like she can have that redemption. But now it's like, all right, you flip flop eighty times. You flip flop when you were with Negan. Then you then you turn. What are you, him, you Morgan? Brick and yeah, right. So it's. You know, all of a sudden, more, all of a sudden, uh, uh, Gabriel wakes up and, and she's gone. Right. So I'm still a little curious. I, I don't really, I can't really stand her too much, but I'm still kind of curious about where she's going and who these people are and yeah. and what to expect uh, as far as uh, you know, new characters, new new foes. Uh, this I know, that's of- the thing. Like that, that's the only thing that that that, that connect her connection to what's happening. This uh, this I keep calling it like a splinter cell. Is it the Commonwealth? Is it a splinter cell of the Commonwealth? Is it a whole nother group that makes that now all of a sudden there's all these groups like that's fine and everything. But, you know, it's just, you know, and, and when we talk about characters, again, we always say this, but it's it's never the we're not talking about the actor. The actor's doing the part justice. It's just the, they're playing it so well that we don't like the character. That's what it is. Yeah. Like the yeah. way they're playing it, you know? Yeah. Either way, the point is motivations, dialogue, that's all been way better. It's been yeah, superb. It's been fantastic. We've re- Mike and I've really enjoyed these past three, four episodes now. So, you know, 
I I just going forward. I I don't know. You know, I mean, that, you know, this episode had a lot of fun stuff and a lot of wacky stuff. One last thing I want to mention is when Michonne's out doing her nightly prowls, you, you know, she's not get she's not going very far. She's she's probably yeah. heading out in different directions from, but she's not going very far, right? And then the one night she sees um, a black man being hung by a tree. He's bound and hung, and he's it's a he's a fresh corpse, like he's a fresh walker, which means it it happened recently, and and you know, and you could see the disgust on her face and everything. And the reason I bring this up, you know, the world climate aside right now, is just that in this show, like there's still there's there's still people in the show like that are you know that that's a freaking hate crime you know what i'm saying and you're still that's still happening so i'm like why would what's the what's the reasoning behind putting something like that in the show because to me you're setting up for something else like you're not just putting a commentary of the world into the show that's not yeah. what this is not a this is not a medium or a platform for that but yeah. what but what it can be is are you are you saying that there's another group out there doing that now there's a there's a racist piece of crap group out there doing these things because that's a yeah. very specific thing to a very specific type of person right what are you doing like I what mean, is I, it you it's know definitely what I mean? a message it's definitely a message uh, regardless of if they meant it to be that way or not now it just, remember it just really stuck out you know, and it gregory, just gregory me, was you know? also hung as well so is this just something is it a device that people are using because regardless of race um, um gender anything like that do, right if you do something bad maybe that's the way they're do, they're killing people right the only so, reason why i bring up the race thing was her face that. like she looked like yeah. you she was disgusted like it wasn't like oh crap look at that it was like it was like what the you know what the hell is happening like why would they you yeah know? anyway you look um, you let us know what you think uh, about everything we talked about tonight. That's right. Um, That's right. And, uh, you know, we, yeah, we want to hear your thoughts. So, you know, do, do what you do in the comments. You know what to do. <laughs> That's right. Get it down in those comments. Let us know what you think about this whole situation. Let us know how many boxes of tissues you think you're going to have to buy to get through these next couple uh, episodes. You go to the dollar store. They're dollar to dollar <laughs> store. I'm just saying. It's good. Like when you're a little kid, you used to have the little pack that you used to keep those in. Little like, packs, yeah. Get yeah, those at the dollar see. store, too. <laughs> But let's see what happens. Guys, let us know uh, what you feel about the, the episode, episode four, and, and the season so far. We've enjoyed it. Let us know what you think about all that kind of stuff. We'd love to hear that from you guys. Of course, Third Person Pod, you can check us out at Twitter, on Instagram, and on Facebook as well. And you can have a listen to this on iTunes, Third Person Pod. Yep, guys, uh, one last thing. I will plug what else we're doing on this channel. We have Into the Badland content. We've been doing interviews with the cast and the crew, with directors and producers, and um, uh, we're looking to get a lot more people. We have a whole uh, playlist of uh, community Q&As uh, from, the, from the Facebook community that we're in for Into the Badlands, uh, plus other questions. So we have a whole playlist on that. We also have an Into the Badlands trivia show yes. with um, a few of the act. With uh, We've got um, Daniel and Sherman, and we've got uh, Paco, uh, director extraordinaire, and we also have... Um, uh, a woman named Heather from the community on there. So yeah. we're, we, we don't forget really, Giovanni and Giovanni. Well, no, he wasn't on the trivia yet. I'm uh, talking about the trivia playlist. Okay. Um, Let's not forget him regardless. <laughs> yeah. No, he's in, he's, he's in the interview playlist. So guys go check those out. If you're into that show, yeah. if you're not into that show, go watch it. You can watch the first two seasons on Netflix and you could probably get the first half of season three somewhere else um, on AMC or wherever, but check that out. It's a great show. We, we wholeheartedly support it. And we're doing really fun stuff over there. So we just like to give that a shout out. So that's going to do it for us. Thank you so much for watching. And we will see you guys in the next Walking Dead video. Good night.